Hello everyone and welcome to episode 36 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by an amazing powerhouse of inspiration, Meredith Driscoll. This is a conversation that truly everyone needs to hear. You might at first think trauma doesn't apply to you, but think again. This may be the piece of the puzzle we've all been missing. In this truly profound and thought-provoking conversation, Meredith and I discuss the fascinating topic of trauma at the intersection of the climate crisis and eco-activism. We explore nervous system regulation and the impact of fight, flight, freeze and fawn on how we interact with ourselves and others. Learning to understand this natural reflex your body's innate safety system will affect not just you but also the people around you and society as a whole and has huge consequences for how effective we can be at attempting to facilitate the changes that will create a happier healthier society where nature is truly nurtured. Meredith has so much wisdom to share critically reminding us that what is common isn't automatically normal. She encourages us to seek new levels of tolerance and kindness towards ourselves, replacing our harsh inner judgment with curiosity and our criticism with compassion, and regularly returns to the idea that whilst it may be simple, it is not always easy to embody. Welcome Meredith. And thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I'm really looking forward to talking to you and uh, I think we're going to be exploring some quite interesting topics today and hopefully providing some really useful information for the listeners. Um, But I just get started with all my guests by just asking them to share a little bit about their nature story, which is quite open and it can just be interpreted any way you like, any way that maybe nature's been a part of your life or um, has become a part of your life in later life. Um, So yeah, if there's anything you'd like to share to get us started, that'd be fantastic. Absolutely. And thank you for welcoming me. Um, As far as nature goes and my nature story, uh, when you first brought that question up, I started thinking like, what has my relationship with nature been like? And I've always loved nature. I think one of the biggest, I think, heartbreaks of this society is that we are so disconnected from nature. And yeah. when people ask me, like, oh, I, you know, I don't have any resources, I can't afford anything, like, what's something I can do? Like, go outside. Yeah. Yeah. Go outside, get some sun, put your bare feet in the grass, lay your back against a tree, go for a walk, go for a hike. Um, that's one of the, I mean, that's a free resource that can have a significant impact upon your well-being. And so we have a, a nature love and family. My partner is training to hike the Appalachian Trail. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. It's a six-month hike. So he's training for that. So we as a family go hiking a lot. Um, I'm about to leave in a week for um, two weeks hiking the Andes and the oh. Inca Trail. Oh, so, incredible. Oh, I and, went to um, Patagonia uh, probably just over 10 years ago. It's absolutely incredible energy down there. Amazing. You'll absolutely love it. I can't wait. I can't wait. We're just hiking to different sacred sites and meditating and hiking to more sacred sites. And I'm so excited just to be in nature and unplugged from all this. So <laughs> uh, I think that unplug moment is really crucial and you know that brings me to a really important point that that talks on nature in our society what's common isn't necessarily normal yeah and so we hear people all the time like oh that's normal and it's like actually that's not normal yeah that can like so many things in our society such as screens or our schedules um the nine to five structure none of that is actually normal it's common and there's a big difference and it goes completely against our nature as human beings 
to shove ourselves into these boxes. And so when you were talking about, you know, what's your nature moment, it's like, really, while nature itself is a huge part of my life, and I'm so grateful for um, the moments of, of sheer bliss that I feel when I'm plugged into that when I'm dropped in and present, present, that's yeah, <laughs> not normal, right? Not common. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but really, I think the the biggest part of my nature story is remembering that I am, in fact, nature. Yeah. Human beings are we're nature. We are animal bodies. Yeah. That are being shoved into this mold of nine to fives of setting New Year's resolutions in January when we're supposed to be hibernating. Like <laughs> yeah. all of these things that are counterintuitive to our animal bodies. Yeah. And just really coming back into um, natural rhythms. Yeah. And, and one of my favorite quotes is a Lasso quote, which is nature never rushes and yet everything is accomplished. And so remembering that I am nature. And I have a natural rhythm and I can look to nature and remember that I can be guided by the seasons and know that everything will happen when it's meant to happen. And I'm safe to relax and to reunite my body with what is actually normal yeah. and not what's common. So I think that is um oh that's it's amazing and it's so well there's so much there already it's so beautiful um and it well I mean that's part of why I wanted to bring you on because your your background is is working with in a holistic manner with with people who are struggling with trauma and I know from from my own experience and and also having done this podcast for sort of the last 18 months is there's a lot of people who feel very strongly about the environment and the environmental crisis that are feeling this sort of sense of eco anxiety and it's sort of uh, this collective trauma around nature and, and the things that have been done and that sense of powerlessness which is sort of layering on top of probably our own traumas because I mean if you want if you want to talk a little bit about trauma but um, I know like something that you're quite passionate about is the fact that a lot of times trauma used to be seen as something like huge and horrendous that happened to, you know, sort of soldiers at war. And actually in more recent time, people have realized that actually it's, it's quite often smaller events and things that are little traumas that stack up on people, isn't it? Yeah. There's different types of trauma. Um, there's acute trauma, there's chronic trauma, there's, uh, it's often broken into categories of like big T and little T. Yeah. So like capital T trauma being something um, like a really acute experience or really like ongoing um, regular abuse. And then there's also something that I've called subtle trauma, which is not what did happen to you, but what didn't happen. Oh, okay, that's interesting. And that can look like not being accepted um, in your full range of emotions as a child. Uh, I think a lot of us probably have the experience with our parents who weren't taught how to manage their emotions. When we get outside of this window of emotional expression, we're told to go to our rooms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. repeatedly that signals to us that unless I'm in this window, I'm not okay. And I can be angry, but only in this window. I can be joyful, but only in this window. Yep. And and then I'm too much or I'm not enough. And that puts us into a, a deficit space, which is um, a lack of safety. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I guess that's really powerful because it is, I've never, I've never even thought of it that way, but um, you know, cause it is quite often thought of what happens to you, but yeah, actually being aware of, of the areas where you weren't, what do I want to say provided for I suppose in a, in an emotional sense as well can sets up all of these little sort of patterns um, and belief systems about how we feel about ourselves doesn't it from from an early age yeah and even even with like the big events um, trauma again is it's not what it's not the event itself but it's what happens internally in response to the event that that occurs 
there are all kinds of studies that show that children that go through same experiences, the ones that have a support system or even one person that they have a strong connection with that they can talk to, those kids show extreme resilience and and don't show the markers of someone with trauma as opposed to the children who don't have anything, um, any support, any connection. And so one of my favorite quotes by Dr. Gabor Mate is, um, I'm gonna paraphrase it, it's trauma is not what happens, but it's the, it's it's not, it's the, oh man, I don't wanna screw it up, but it's, <laughs> it's uh, the absence of safety. Yeah, yeah. Now, um... I've I've read some of his books. Um, it's uh, and he's one of he's one of the sort of great four thinkers on and sort of getting this more into the mainstream, isn't it? Um, it, a lot of his work is is quite important. Uh, have you got a favorite book of his that you would recommend for anyone who's perhaps like just interested to sort of dip their toe a little bit and and find out a bit more? Um, I honestly think that. Anything that you can consume from Dr. Gabor Mate will, has the potential to benefit your life. Um, I recommend his podcasts, his YouTube interviews, if you don't want to sit down with an entire book, but I really love when the body says no. Um, as a trauma worker, I do a lot with the human body and we talk about where trauma is stored in the body. And one of the, one of the things that I really, um, would stick my flag in the sand over is that I think the root of most, if not all dis-ease in the body is chronic stress or repressed emotion. Yeah. So yeah. you've, I mean, you've, you've had your, I mean, that that's sort of where the root of you, of your business came from, wasn't it? Was you, you've had quite a, a huge amount of, of your own, um, problems with your body I guess for, for want of a, a different way of of describing it that has led you on this amazing journey um that, that you followed hasn't it yes and I'm actually back in a season of um of having a flare-up and that is something I haven't experienced for longer than a week in seven years and oh, so wow. it's just a deeper invitation for me to um, connect with myself and go in and figure out where I can love myself more, where I can approve of myself and validate myself even more, where I can clear the unworthiness wound even more. And um, yeah, I, I was hit by a semi truck when I was 17 and I had back surgery when I was 19 and for 15 years, couldn't walk on a regular basis. It was really mm -hmm. a crapshoot. Nobody knew like if mm -hmm. I'd wake up and be great or if I'd wake up and like not be able to walk. And my great was like serious pain, but I could walk. Yeah. Um, so I've had actually two months in to a really big flare up and it's, yeah, it's, it's brought me to my knees and it's also brought me back into, okay, there's more work to do and that's yeah. okay. And I think, probably, um, that's something really important, isn't it? Is it's just to remember that it's not that it's inherently bad or that, you know, you're it, it's not that it's a one time job, is it either? It's like, you know, it's this life to, lifelong journey with yourself. And, you know, I love the way that you're saying it's an opportunity for discovery and for going deeper. And, you know, you're you're obviously you got to the point where you actually had the strength to to be able to to face this and go deeper and I think that's the important thing as well isn't it is um when you're working with trauma and working with people and probably most of us have have some degree of trauma that you're working with is being having that grace with yourself as well isn't it to to go gently at the pace and and obviously ideally have the support of of someone like yourself who can can guide that process quite quite gently and and with just hold that space of safety which is the quote you mentioned earlier for them mm -hmm. and oftentimes we are our number one source of unsafety yeah and it all comes from the internal monologue and this is something that i've really been sitting with for the last two months when even even when we no, right? Like, oh, this is when human beings are actually meant to hibernate. This is when we're meant to rest. This is when we're meant to um, reflect, to slow down. Yes, yeah, <laughs> slow down and go in 
there's still such a societal programming for us and and a and a pressure to go do produce that hustle that hustle mindset and culture isn't it it's just it's pervades everything like we're you know you're you're always you've always got to be at peak production basically it's like and and if you're not then you're you know it comes back again to safety you're you're seen as weak and you know you're failing because you you can't sustain this peak energy for a hundred percent of the time and as women especially we're not meant to we we have different energetic levels throughout our monthly cycle and and that it it's been frustrating honestly going into this experience and being in this experience even knowing what i know being a safe place for myself meaning that i only speak kindly and positively to myself even if i'm maybe not um getting the outcomes that i want and that's a direct reflection of my action or inaction mm -hmm. but like always replacing judgment with curiosity and criticism with compassion like those are the two biggest things that can make a huge difference in your own internal landscape and in this process it's been like okay how where are the boundaries of my self-love do they end with my productivity or can i still bring self-love and allowance and compassion into into this phase where I physically cannot be as productive as I would like. Yes, I would love to be at yoga. I would love to be at the gym and I would cause extreme injury if I were. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just like, how, where are the boundaries of my self-love and how can I stretch those even further? Knowing what I know and still feeling the programming of go, do, be, hustle, grind. <laughs> it's still there. Yeah. It's just having to like actively and consciously detach from it of like no that's not where my worth is my worth is here yeah yeah it's I I love that those 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 two things that you said there in relation to yourself I'm like oh my goodness that just has like this huge connotation for the world as well it's like you know obviously a lot of this I think a lot more people are realizing that actually that there's a healing journey within themselves but actually that then has this beautiful ripple effect on on the world around them and that can be their immediate family their immediate relationships but also it's just the energy that we're putting into the world and I love that where you're saying like replace criticism with compassion and it's just like if we can learn to sort of hold that with ourselves where we're probably the harshest judge of people aren't we on ourselves then it does set us up to to sort of bring that energy into the world as well which can have just oh, I, I'm excited <laughs> I, like I love it I'm like oh my god that's just like this beautiful and it seems so simple but I think it is hard and it's like you said it's like this constant like awareness is a big thing I think isn't it for people just you know gradually raising your own awareness of of the dialogue you're having with yourself as well um and realizing that you're probably speaking to yourself in a way that you wouldn't dream of speaking to someone else exactly that's always the biggest test like would you speak to a seven-year-old that way or would you speak to your best friend that way absolutely not so why would you speak to yourself that way and that's what I mean when I say like oftentimes when we're in an unsafe space I mean, so often we are the creator and experiencer of that unsafe space. So that's been part of this journey for me lately too, is like, how do I become just like so, so safe for myself yeah. where like, even in mistakes or, or repeating patterns that I would love to see closed out, right? Yeah. It's not bringing in the, the judgment and the criticism. Yeah and the harshness and the, you're never going to beat yourself up into change. Mm -hmm. um, not sustainably anyways, like you cannot hate yourself into <laughs> transformation. You can only love yourself into evolution. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. Yeah. Wow. No, I do. I think um, we've touched on it a couple of times, but you, you mentioned like this idea of safety and I guess that really relates to, basically our nervous system and and again this comes back to nature as well and it's how you know it's this sort of like intrinsic fundamental you know basics of of how we're wired to to react and um and unfortunately how stress plays a and our hectic <laughs> lifestyles plays plays into that that sense of of lack of safety in our nervous system yeah 
um, safety is the lack of, or it's the the fear, right? The the presence of of loss, harm, deficit, injury, death, pain, yeah. and when we're in those spaces, we're in unsafe spaces. So by definition, shame then becomes an unsafe space, right? When we're in a space of deficit, shame is deficit, right? Being too much, not enough, wrong, bad, deficient. Um, so when we're in shame spaces, we're walking around not feeling safe. And mm -hmm. again, it's like, am I the perpetuator and creator of this? Or is it coming from somewhere outside of me? And a lot of times we'll experience it outside of us first. And then it becomes our inner, right? Our nervous system gets mm -hmm. attuned to that. And so we keep ourselves in these spaces. And so that's a lot of the work. It's, it's yes, uh, things outside of our control happen to us. Just like, I mean, at the, the world at large with the environment, with the things that are happening in and on and to the earth and yeah, then I was just listening to your list then I was like oh you could relate everything that you've just said to the environment and you know then the new well but the it's the news we receive about the environment I think is is particularly what relates to that list that you said you know the deficit and and all of that, all the, the news that we're getting from the mainstream media about the environment literally sat like tick every box on your list there, which which is then, you know, it's this sort of you're like a sponge as well, aren't you? And you're you you're getting all of this sense of of all of that sort of bearing down on you and and feeling, you know, that, that people are feeling unsafe about the future of the world, really. And then and you know, and when you layer that with your own traumas as well, it's yeah, it's it's um it's no wonder that it's it's becoming a sort of a, a more of a topic that's being discussed I think um in the world which which is good is what it needs to we need to discuss this more so that we can provide people with ways to to help because I think that's that's the thing is the some of the the things that um you know trauma can can cause in the body people think it it's like a label for life and you know, you can't ever heal from it. And what I think is so powerful about your story is like <laughs> the ama amazing, like healing transformation that you've been through personally and, and helped your, your clients work through as well, through all of the modalities that you work with to help sort of, I get it, is soothe the, the nervous system a, a good description? Regulate, yeah. uh, learn how to ride it, how to how to know where you are, where where your state is, um, how to shift your state, how to be with yourself in any state, and and know that you also don't have to stay there, and mm -hmm. and the really fine line is like how do I, how do I like really honor and be with myself and be with what is, and also know that I can shift my state without bypassing anything. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a big part of stuff that I see in especially in like the online and the spiritual and the self-help community that there's a lot of bypassing going on and it's yeah. a fun line to walk, but it's important. That's a really important line to, to be intimate with. Um, and yeah, the way that this relates to, I mean, the way that I'd honestly never sat down and thought about it until like the connection of like the environment and trauma, but I'm like, now I've, Feel like I could talk about it for a day and a half <laughs> I know it's um it's something I um I'm quite a few, I guess it actually was during COVID I was actually doing a an online course with a an eco activist artist and um she has something called trigger point theory and it's like it's it's just a different way of looking at uh, a situation I, I don't even want to say a problem because it's again not wanting to put that connotation of good or bad onto something but just a situation and one of the things that I saw at that point was I was like looking at um you know sort of conservation areas and the impacts on the you know the community how the community sort of interact with these conservation areas and and I was thinking well like when the communities have, have been through quite like traumatic experiences I, I spent quite a lot of time in Africa so um you know there's there's still quite some there's certain areas that I've spent a lot of time that are still um They've, they've still got a lot of um difficulties with um you know how the the culture is and um 
sort of rebel forces and 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 sort of war and and things like you know quite extreme <laughs> trauma things for people and I, and it was like you know when when these people are in those spaces of trauma then it it is really hard to like they're in survival like they're literally in survival and you know and you can't judge them for that like <laughs> that's that's how anyone in that situation would be and and I do think it's it, it is for us here where we haven't got those sort of huge external um factors large traumas but we are still aware of all of the impact of the environment and feeling this sort of powerlessness as well and and not knowing how to help and and that's having you know this sort of constant impact on us so yeah yeah speaking of fine lines that's one right knowing that we can be instruments of change. We have the potential to make a positive impact. And at the same time, now anytime I, I'm thinking about activism, right? We're fighting something. Yeah. And there's two different energies that I often see from activists. And one will be um, a really empowered, like this is the vision that I see. This is the vision that I hold. This is the possibility that I know is alive and is yeah. real that we can connect to and there's so much hope there and so they're moving from a place of empowerment and inspiration and love and devotion and then a lot of activism that i see is rooted in the scarcity space yeah. coming from a space of not feeling safe and <clears throat> again there's no there's no shaming anyone who is in that space right we've all been there in some capacity at some point in our lives in relation to some topic it just is right so but i see a lot of activism um coming from a space of scarcity and and they're in a fight response yeah it's not what's possible what are we dreaming what is the vision of the future let's create the things that we want it's an absolute fight response of we have to fight the bad guys we have to fight what we don't want and they're completely different energies and knowing people on both sides of that having been on both sides of that the energy and the experience is completely different and i think that the outcome is really different too yeah I think yeah i love i love that i love the way you've just you've really crystallized that into and it is and it's i mean i'm not perfect at all <laughs> none of us are but um i think that's that's the space I'm trying to come from is this space of like more hopeful empowerment, not in a naive sense that I'm just denying that any of it exists, but just in a sense of like, that's, that, you know, I don't know that like the sort of rising tide lifts all boats and it's, it's that chain. And I guess that's sort of the, you know, the sort of nervous system ladder as well. Like there's a little analogy there, isn't there of like lifting out of this sort of lower nervous system responses of fight and flight and, and freeze as well, which is also a very important one to be aware of um, and lifting into this more regulated state where you are just, I guess, just more expansive and you're able to have like these deeper more serious conversations and just approach things in a more collaborative manner I think I don't know if that's that sort of yeah yeah, yeah you touched on something really important um I, the window of tolerance is that space that you're referring to where we're the people might have heard it called rest and digest but it's when we're capable of having uh, connected conversations where we have full executive functioning happening, we have full access to this. But as soon as we move out of that, as soon as we move into a state of fight or flight, our hearing change, something happens in our inner ear oh. and we no longer can hear the human voice. Like, I mean, it, we know that it's there, right? Mm -hmm. But we can't, our inner ear does this crazy thing where our, our hearing changes and we tune out the pitch of the human voice and we tune into really high and really low frequencies. And that is a survival mechanism where we can hear if all the birds are flying away because there's a predator or if there's something rumbling in the in the brush like that is what's happening and so when we leave that window of tolerance of course we can't have a productive and loving and constructive conversation with someone else we can barely we can barely hear them and then when we're activated when we're in that fight state or flight state or even the freeze um the fawn state i have i have a lot to say about nervous system and polyvagal theory and things of that nature um fawn state i think i mean we're still somewhat connected to our 
our social engagement system because we can read a room and we can people please and we can we're thinking our way through something but when we're in freeze when we're in fight when we're in flight we don't have access to our resources to be able to solve problems we don't have problem solving skills right we're going to fight the thing we're going to run away from the thing we're going to freeze and pretend that it doesn't exist and you know la 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 la. so when we're in that window of tolerance when we're able to be regulated within ourselves and feel safe within our own bodies that's when we can sit down and say okay we have a situation on our hands this is far away from our ideal um situation our ideal outcome this is not healthy for any of us so how do we work together how do we collaborate how do we access our social engagement system that you're only going to have full access to when you're in that window of tolerance in the rest and digest the calm cool collected you're okay right um that's that's where the progress comes from yeah. that's the only space that that sustainable transformation is going to come from and when you look out and you see you're like looking at activists you're like man that is a that is a big fight state so mm-hmm. they can't even hear if someone is saying like hey why don't we try this why don't we do this why they're they're so clicked into i have to fight the bad thing i have to fight the bad guys I have to, I have to end this. Right. And it's like, we have to be able to sit down and have a conversation Yeah, and bring everyone to the table. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. It's, um, and, and again, going back to saying, you know, there's, there's no judgment here from either of us. We're just, we're just here to like try and, and sort of raise awareness for people to sit there and think, well, hang on, what state am I, am I, generally operating from you know because we we all fluctuate we're not all necessarily stuck in one particular state all the time but what state am I functioning from when I'm having certain reactions when I'm having certain conversations and um and then how how can you you sort of bring awareness to that and having brought awareness go okay how do I regulate myself in these feelings and and situations so that I can well, I mean, it benefits as you like it, obviously, like we've talked about health and wellness and, and the effects that these have on your nervous system, but also how we can benefit the society, community, the world, um, the environment. Um, and I think that's why I was, I was so excited to talk to you, because I just oh think. Oh, my this... gosh. Sorry, my dog is just oh, my... freaking out. <laughs> scared me. So sorry for the interruption. <laughs> we back up to a bunch of woods, which I love. Uh... And so we'll have critters in the yeah. backyard looks like there's he's spotted one i can't see what he's looking at but he is at full <laughs> alert anyways so sorry Ooh, no come back no no no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you just went you you went into a <laughs> startle <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely. that's how quickly it happens yeah that's how quickly it happens because i totally now like thinking i totally i didn't hear exactly what you said i knew that you were talking but i was like what's happening is there a predator approaching <laughs> the back door that's how fast it happens. Ooh, and now we take a deep breath and we come back into our body and we come back into safety. Okay, I'm I'm back where my feet are. Good. <laughs> I mean, can you can you talk about maybe some ways that people could um easily start to to manage if they they've started to think, "Oh, hang on a minute, maybe I am in, you know, the not in the rest let's say so the ideal is the rest and digest stage of 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 your nervous system and if you're sort of thinking well I don't think I'm in that sitting in that space are there some easy tools that that we could share for people that they could just have a little play around with begin to sort of notice I guess because that's the thing isn't it it's beginning to experience maybe like just little glimmers of like oh I can feel different like my existence can could be different and then that's once you've had that little look at it, you you know something to grow on, don't you? One thing I want to touch on really, really quickly, and then I'm going to answer that question, is that you said um, the window of tolerance is the ideal state. I want to um, to share, because when people get into nervous system regulation, they're like, I have to get regulated. I can't be in fight or flight. Like, that's bad, right? So all of a sudden, like the trauma responses, the fight, flight, freeze, fawn, they're looking at those with judgment and like, those are bad the window of tolerance is an ideal state for us to be in most of the time. And there are certain times when 
it is absolutely ideal for you to be in fight or flight. Yeah. It's absolutely ideal for you to be in freeze or fawn. And so I don't want to make those like bad or wrong yeah. because that just, it, right. That perpetuates yeah. the space. I'm bad, wrong, broken, not good enough, not enough, too much. So, and that's the shame space and that's unsafe. So um, just like to make that really clear when mm -hmm. I'm talking about this work so that we can start to just like strip off the layers of shame that we put on ourselves without, without realizing. Um, but to answer your question, some quick things that you can do. I mean, first of all, like literally going out into nature is my favorite, my favorite thing, sitting in the grass, taking a deep breath, looking around, like really breathing, um, breathing into your feet, breathing into any contact point that you have with the ground. So if that's, and like really paying attention to that, and it sounds really simple. Something you said earlier, it's simple, but it's hard. It, that's when I say it all the time. It's simple. It's not easy, but breathing into any awareness that you have of where you're touching the ground, maybe that's my feet, maybe that's the lower part of my thighs, my butt, maybe it's my back against a tree or on the grass. And so just like really starting to breathe and coming back into your body, because we live in such a cerebral culture um, and so many of us are dissociated all the time and don't even know it. Yeah. So coming back into your body and using that the awareness of where is my physical body right now that's why i said when i got activated just then i was like okay i'm back where my feet are um we leap to you know we're up here all the time or we leap our soul is like i'm out <laughs> yeah. not our soul but our psyche or our awareness right it's yeah. like i'm out of this is not a safe place to be i live yeah. up here now um so just like coming back into our body as much as possible with awareness with touch with sound with breath um, anytime I start to feel any kind of like bunk going on, I will identify where I feel it in my body. Um, so maybe it's in my stomach and I'll sit, I'll imagine breathing into that sensation wherever it is. And then I'll kind of sit with it for a second and be like, what if this sensation had a sound, what would that sound be? And then I will just sound it just like as unhinged. I don't care. <laughs> Um, I do it in crowds all the time because I'm like, no one's going to know that this weird like bellow is coming from me <laughs> and I feel funky from, you know, maybe it's the amount of people. Oh my gosh. The, as I get older and I, I come into more awareness, so many things that I thought that I loved were actually just like me living on adrenaline. So like thinking that I loved crowds and loud noises and, and busy places, like that was really cute, baby girl, but that was not... It was trauma. That was a yeah. trauma response. I actually don't enjoy those situations and scenarios often. And so if I'm like in a big crowd of people, I will like, okay, I've got some funk in my belly. Okay. So I'll just, uh, and I'll just like, I'll sound it. So yeah. there's three ways to move stuck energy, breath, sound, and movement. And that's that stuck energy that's in there, um, repressed emotion, you bypassing your own feelings of discomfort connecting to that and then moving it breath sound and and movement any way that you can move that because it takes so much energy to push those things down it takes so much energy to to know that they're there and try to pretend that they're not so that you can keep going so that you can keep being productive so that you can keep being judged as good enough and approved of and validated and and you know worthy and loved by our society it's so deep the conditioning but um so moving like making sounds whenever you feel some funk in your body just being with it learning how to yeah. be with it. Um, one of my favorites is massaging the inner ear just giving it a good wiggle stimulating your vagus nerve um humming um so the the sigh is great so just uh, starting at a higher pitch and dropping into a lower one um I also, if you're really activated, I, anytime my clients are activated, I'm like, put your back against the wall right now, feel the, the wall behind you. And I want you to turn and I want you to scan your entire environment yeah. around. There are no apex predators in your current environment. Right. Yeah. And if there are get into that flight state and NG yeah. up, right? get out, so, <laughs> get out all you can. Like, like if there's a predator, yeah. please, please um call for help sound the alarm like the, that it's not ideal in that moment to be in your window of tolerance right okay. like go 
Um, but look around, there is no apex predator. All of my needs are currently provided for, right? Um, most of us that have the privilege of being able to listen to a podcast, our direct needs are probably provided for. Yeah. Um, I have a roof over my head. I have water next to me. I have food upstairs that I can go eat. And I have connection of a, a fuzzy little dog right next to me. Um, I, I absolutely view connection as a, a need. And I think that's one of our biggest lacks of um, basic needs that aren't getting met. Connecting with someone, co-regulation. Regulation is so, so important. And one of the fastest ways to get regulated is to be in the experience of someone else who is regulated. And so just having a person or a group of people or somewhere that you can go where everyone's like really zen and mellow. Like this is one of the reasons why like yoga and breath work and things like that are so important. We're getting to drop into a collectively regulated system. Yeah. Yeah. To feel that and our body responds to that so quickly. It also, it it does that in nature. Nature has a really great way of really quick quickly dropping you into a regulated state, especially when you are present and you're not up here yeah. spinning. Yeah, no, it's, there is, I was, there's quite a few times when you were talking and I was thinking about, I've got horses and I was thinking about like the three things that you said, like movement, breath and, and sound. And I was thinking when they get a fright, like their immediate reaction is, is run because they're a flight animal. So they go straight into that, that sort of flight response. Then they'll, if, if they're sort of like, oh, nothing's actually chasing them, they'll stop, turn around, look at the thing and quite often like do a big like snort. So quite a loud noise and, and then obviously quite a deep breath as well. So you've got like those those three things like immediately, like you've, you've got the movement, the sound and then the breath. Mm-hmm. And they'll stand there sort of looking and, and breathing and, and then eventually they'll be like, OK, actually, it was, you know, it, it wasn't, a, you know, a lion this time. We're, we're fine. It was a plastic bag or something yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. And then and it is that's that's the thing with it. This is, you know, this is intrinsically wired into our DNA, isn't it? The, these like nervous system responses. And it's just unfortunately because of the stress that we endure I suppose really in in our society and this like we mentioned earlier this sort of perpetual expectation of of production and and peak performance that that we get we get so dysregulated and also like you touched on trauma responses as well from experiences that we've had whether that is um things that have happened to us or or not happened to us um that have set us up for not being able to to regulate ourselves as as naturally as as we should do um but it's not something that's that like you said it's not it's not good or bad or or broken or need fixing it's just something that we can by working with someone like yourself learn the tools to help ourselves like move through life and and let these things move through us because i think that's the thing isn't it is really it's about being able to move up and down like the scale of of nervous system regulation without judgment but not getting stuck just in one place that's that's the problem isn't it is really is when you just get stuck and you can't move in or out of it that you would do naturally mm-hmm. exactly and and even not judging that not judging the stuckness i tell my clients all the time i'm like cuz they'll be like oh my god i need to like oh my my mean and you know the i have people we we name parts of ourselves and so like we'll name our inner mean girl And so I'll have a client that's like, oh my God, Heather's being so loud. And like, I know, like, I just need to shut her up. Or someone will be like, I'm in the, I'm in a flight state and it's, I got to, I've got to regulate. I've got to regulate. I've got to regulate. And it's actually like, can you just be okay? Can you just like, just like, instead of doing this, just let go. And can you be okay with where you are? Because based on how you grew up, this is actually a divine intelligence that has developed this mechanism to keep you safe. Because on a a physiological level, you love yourself so much that you did anything and everything necessary to keep yourself safe and in connection to your caregivers and in connection to your needs being met. And a lot of times that looks like self-abandonment. A lot of times that looks like um, people pleasing or, you know, exiling parts of ourselves, repressing our emotions. That's all learned stuff. But every single bit of that 
as an intelligence, you are perfectly functioning for everything that you have been through. Even if you are in a chronic response, a, cro a chronic trauma response, and that's what chronic stress is, right? It's not being able to downregulate and come back into that window of tolerance. And based on the news that you see when you turn on the television, the traffic, the screens, the, I mean, like all of the input to mm -hmm. this system, this animal body that is not normal at all, all of the stress that's coming in, of course, we're staying dysregulated. So it's like, how can I be okay with that and not add on the shame, right? Add on mm -hmm. creating internal unsafety, lack of safety inside because of our judgments, but say, okay, this is how this is. And I'm okay with that. I can, I have the capacity to be present with that, to accept that, and now to choose something different. And you just bring in the awareness and like, okay, this is where I am. And that's okay. I still love myself right here. And I'm so thankful to all of my mechanisms that are trying to keep me safe. Now, let's see if this is like maybe some, let's see if this is accurate, right? Because evolutionarily, we were meant to run from predators, right? Tigers, lions, dinosaurs, like legitimate apex predators. Our society has evolved so much faster than our nervous systems. So now we're sitting in traffic, like I'm going to be late and my boss is going to yell at me and our body is responding as if we are looking at a tiger that is very hungry. <laughs> it's not like we have mismatched inputs, right? So it's just like, okay, I'm in traffic and my boss might yell at me. How? Can okay. So I'm going to take a deep breath, right? I'm going to I'm going to come back into my body. Maybe I'm going to have a primal scream. Lord, I love having a primal scream in the car. It is so, it is good. It is good. If you've never just screamed in your car, like 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, <laughs> and then I always end up laughing at myself because I'm like, what are the people around me thinking? And so like it, it, when you move, when you are like with an emotion, you can be with an emotion and move it like so quickly, it turns into laughter. But I, now I'm like all the time, I can't cry without laughing at myself now because I like just, can zoom out and see myself and see how hysterical the situation is that like yeah. you know I'm I think crying that's, over um, a big thing isn't it is you you mentioned like not denying like your feelings as well like you know sure. just yeah just ex embracing them and accepting them and and I guess that's you know like we're, we're talking about embracing and accepting ourselves as well and 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 all feelings and and that's that you I mean you've just mentioned like you know like fear but like if you're angry as well it's like it's it's not you know nothing is part of what you do the work you do is is nothing is is good or bad it's re releasing that judgment and just having the awareness of saying I, I a part of me is just feeling this you know and um I think that's something else you do is parts work isn't it and um you know it's uh family systems which I also find fascinating and I think it's it's quite an empowering technique for people as well isn't it um one of my favorite modalities it's incredible um I love oh my god I love internal family systems and parts work it's just how can I shift my relationship with this thing right yeah now we could legitimately record an entire another podcast just <laughs> on the importance of feeling your emotions well, we, we might have to do that. I, I feel I feel like we might have to do that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I have so much to say, too, about like uh, about the environment and about the space that we come from um, when we are trying to make a positive change in the world. And I mean, there's just so many different angles that I've literally never thought about it in this perspective. And now I'm like, oh, wow, there's just like this this victimhood here. Right. Yeah. We're in the trauma, drama, oppression, trap triangle of victor, villain, victim. And any that's, I mean, like I'm always running myself through that lens. Where am I in the triangle? Am I the victor? Am I the villain or am, am I the victim? I personally am <laughs> very good at being the victim. That's what I was. Modeled. I think a lot of us probably yeah. are, aren't we? I think, yeah. yeah. And, and so it's like, okay, is my action here? Um, while, while right. The judgment piece again, like, of course I, I want something good. There's like a positive outcome here. I want to, um, I want for us to respect our planet and treat it better for for ourselves, for the planet itself, for our future, right? As humans. Um, and it's like, but where am I, what space am I in coming coming to this this fight, right? Yeah. Am I the victim? Am I the victor? And then of course there has to be a villain. 
So then we get into our activated state, whatever yeah. flavor that is for us. And we're, we're in fight or flight or we're in freeze. And then uh, usually I see people, you know, you get really worked up about something, you get passionate about it. Of course we all do. That's normal. No judgment. Right. Mm -hmm. I've been really incredibly passionate about the environment before. And I mean, I am, but like, I've gotten really worked up and really emotional about it. It's easy to do when it's a cause that matters to us. Yeah. When we're doing that, then the people on the other side, right. The, 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 the villains, villains yeah. people that we're trying to change, right. We're trying to inspire different behavior from them. We're trying to impress our values upon them and have them say, you know what, you're right. And I'm going to take on your values and I'm going to act differently because of this. If they're being screamed at, if someone's coming at them from a, a fight state, their animal body feels that and is going to respond. So what's going to happen? Their inner ear is going to shift. They're not going to hear what they're saying. And they're going to engage in, I have to get out of here. I'm going to freeze and tune you out, or I'm going to fight you. Yeah. Their positive change is not coming from that space. So um, just, but, and, and like, we have one earth. We have like, love your mother, right? And just like the amount of love and care and devotion that I feel to this earth that is an extension of a large extension of my physical body, right? I am the four elements and there's just so much, I'm getting emotional. There's so much love that I have for this planet that we're mm -hmm. on. And so like, how can we get regulated and then how can we go out and maybe not save her, right? Maybe it's, how do we love her? Yeah. How do we cherish her? How do we honor her? And and how do we honor all beings in the process of that? Like you said, there are people in Africa who have ex exceptional systemic oppression. So how they're getting rid of their garbage is not their first priority, right? Yeah. Yeah. I lived in Cambodia and I, I was just floored by the amount of garbage everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And how they just burn it. And it's in, in the ocean. So it was heartbreaking, honestly. And it's like, well, this is a developing country. These people experienced a mass genocide not that long ago. Um, yeah, I would, this entire population has PTSD, right? They're not, yeah. Yeah. they're concerned with food, with and clean survival, water. just the basic survival. Yeah. yeah. Um, so honestly, I really feel that, mm, okay, so this is getting me on my soapbox and my big <laughs> I truly believe that trauma is the root of every um, issue that we have on the earth. I feel like if enough of us addressed our trauma, every single human on this earth would be fed, clothed, and hugged. What would happen if every human being on this earth was fed, clothed, and hugged? Now we have a whole lot of people that are no longer living in survival. And what does that mean? That means that we have so many more resources and so much more access yeah. to yeah. be to ability to make positive change for the planet that we're on. We're not like, screw it, we'll destroy the earth for whatever resources we can get, right? If we can heal enough trauma, then we have people that are living from their hearts and not their wounds. They don't get run by greed. They're not trying to amass as much as possible so that they can finally feel safe when it's not the money that's ever going to make them feel safe, right? It's their mm -hmm. attachments. It's their inner wounding. So when we have the leaders of the world doing trauma work, now we have people who are like, oh, maybe I don't need all of this stuff and this this hoarding of resources and supplies. This is a trauma response. What can I actually do? What, what do I care about? What am I passionate about? How can I actually breathe life into the earth with all of the things that I've accomplished and acquired, right? How can I use these resources to make the world a better place? Because I think that's what we're all here for. And so with enough people doing trauma work and going in and learning how to have the capacity to be with themselves in all states, feel all emotions and, and be okay with themselves in those states, then we can start to, you know, we're, we have an entire society, the entire world moving out. We can of start survival. building, can't we? We can just, we, yes. you know, we start building this future where we, we can have collaboration, where we can, like you said, use people's resources. I mean, I think it's quite an interesting thing that like quite often in, in trauma, um, you know, sort of therapy, do I want to say that word? I'm not sure. But like one of the th key things is how do you resource yourself? But it's like, actually, it's like, it's twofold, isn't it? Because by regulating yourself you actually get access to your own resources and therefore you can you can have this better impact 
not better judgment again oh see there's a lot of there's a lot of that isn't there but you can just show up in the world in in just this more empowering manner to to be there for for other people and I just wow I mean I feel like yeah we we're gonna have to come back and do like you know <laughs> session two but um and I kind of feel like this is like a really lovely place to end because I agree with absolutely everything that you've said there that I do you know this is part of what I'm trying to sort of bring through with my podcast is that I do think like there is this core like of trauma that every single person is dealing with on some level and actually if I can help bring through people like you and resources for for people that are wanting to do something you know most of the people who are going to be listening to this podcast they care about the natural world that's perhaps their motivating factor but there well, there are other motivating factors for people who want to see people not you know starving not struggling not you know this for the, the community and humanity perhaps is more of a driving force for some than than the environment but yeah I just I do just completely agree with you that like trauma is just such an important topic and I think it needs more attention and I think the beauty is 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 you can move through it as well you know it's not just a label you you don't need to just be like I've got PTSD and that's it for the rest of my life it is something you can recover from and and move through and yeah I just oh I, it's been it's been amazing talking to you but I definitely I definitely think I'm I'm going to come back to you and we're going to do another another episode and and sort of delve in a little bit deeper because I can see you're, you're like you've got loads of ideas and I'd love to to learn more from you because I know there's just so much that you do but is there anything you'd like to sort of leave people with right now and then um, and we can come back in the future I have lots of free resources on my website um now I'm like okay what resource do I make that like is in reference to maybe um a larger more zoomed out approach like you know the the things that are happening on our planet right now both with humans and the environment and animals there's just so much that yeah learning how to be with your feelings is so necessary in this process so necessary um so I actually am I have a free resource in the works right now literally called how to feel your emotions because if so many people be like I don't know how to I, don't, I actually don't know how to do that when you, you learn that feeling your emotions is not just thinking about them like that was one of the biggest breakthroughs in my life oh my god I haven't been feeling my emotions I've just been thinking about feeling them whoa so I have a free resource for that coming really soon and that's really important to process when we are um fighting things right when we're trying to affect a change in the world when we're trying to see something different um, that's coming from an emotional activation. And so we have to learn how to be with that emotion so that we can be regulated yeah. and, and, and take the action, right. And be the change. Um, so my website is www.easywonderfullife.com. And there's just go to the freebies tab. I've got different freebies in there. Um, it's a little bit of a stretch, but I have a journal called, um, heal your mother wound. And, mm. um, I'm sure that if you were to approach, I'm, I'm sure there would be some parallels between our relationships with our mother and the earth. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, just for everyone, um, the link to your website will be in the the description for the podcast and the podcast show notes. So it's uh, you don't have to quickly scribble that down in, in case you're you're driving somewhere or you haven't got a pen. It it will be in the link below, so you'll be able to to hop through and and explore more of Meredith's offerings. Um, I, I know you do also do one on one um work with with clients and and you have various courses as well so if people are are feeling like actually this has been a bit of an aha moment for them that they have perhaps you know sat there and thought actually I've got some deeper things that I want to, to perhaps work through and um, they'll be able to get in touch with you through through the website as well if they they want to explore working with you through the website dm me on instagram I'm a real person I love connecting with people um dm me ask questions i love having conversations i think that it's really through conversations like this one that we begin to change the world um so slide into my dms let's chat um i have i have resources for uh, that can meet anyone where they are from free to 
to paid to group to one on one, I have options that run the gamut. And again, I believe that healing should not be reserved for the wealthy. Um, so yeah. yeah, come connect with me. Yeah. I, wanna, I just really ultimately want to love on more humans. Yeah, no, well, I think that that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, it's what we, we said a few times, haven't we? It's, um, some, it, it sounds easy, but it, it's not as it's simple. It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's simple, but it's not easy. And, but that is the key It's it's love, isn't it? You know, it really is. I mean, it might sound a bit sort of, you know, hippie and new age, like <laughs> love is the answer, but it, but it is, it's just, you know, if we can learn to, to love all parts of ourselves and we can, you know, then sort of move into this nicer, less reactive, collaborative space, we can start having these harder conversations, start coming together in community where we can co-regulate with each other, but we can also, you know, you know, the, the power of a resource community coming together and the amazing answers and solutions that we could come up with if we can all sort of learn to move into that space and you know and and just honor ourselves as well isn't it it's just honoring everything learning to feel our our feelings and process them and move through them and um yeah i've just it's been amazing talking to you i am excited to come back and talk to you again i feel like i've found a, a p in my pod or <laughs> someone who who com completely just gets the way up that i think is is really amazing and um it's just been fantastic to share you with everyone and i'm i'm excited to come back and have another conversation with you as well i've, I've got more to say but i've really enjoyed this conversation Oh, brilliant well thank you so much Meredith it's been fantastic and for everyone listening stay tuned there will be a part two <laughs> in, in the not too distant future hopefully thank you so much for listening to the nurtured by nature podcast I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world so if you can please share this episode with your friends Leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world. <laughs>